Thursday. Good morning. Today, House Republicans, led by Chairwoman Fox, will continue our investigation of the heinous scourge of anti-Semitism running rampant on America's college campuses. A few months ago, when the university presidents of Harvard, Penn, and MIT testified, they made history for their morally bankrupt answers as the most viewed testimony in the history of the United States Congress, and two are now former presidents. And after billions of views and world outcry, it set off a long overdue earthquake in in higher education. The Columbia University president was invited to that hearing but did not attend. Today, the Columbia president will appear in front of the Education and Workforce Committee along with Board of Trustees leaders, and we will hold them accountable for their failure to combat anti-Semitism on their campus and their failure to protect Jewish students. For over 200 years, Columbia University has held the same motto, quote, in thy light shall we see light. Taken from Psalms, Columbia claims to work in God's light. Sadly, for all the Jewish students on their campus, this could not be further from the truth. Fueled by hatred and ignorance, unchecked anti-Semitism has become commonplace on Columbia's campus. Nazi-era anti-Semitic propaganda litters the grounds, swastikas graffiti school property, and mobs assaulting Jewish students, professors openly supporting Hamas and calling for the genocide of the Jewish people. Meanwhile, despite claims otherwise, Columbia's leadership refuses to enforce their own policies and condemn Jewish hatred on campus, creating a breeding ground for anti-Semitism and a hotbed of support for terrorism from radicalized faculty and students. Just look at the campus reaction following the tragic events of October 7th. Over 150 Columbia faculty justified the terrorist attack on Israel, resulting in the deadliest day for Jews since the Holocaust. A Columbia professor penned an article glorifying Hamas, and anti-Israel student groups invited known members of a terrorist group to speak in support of the terrorist slaughter. This hearing is an important step towards transparency and accountability in Chairwoman Fox's investigation and in our oversight of the failure of colleges and universities to condemn and combat anti-Semitism and their failure to protect Jewish students. Before our hearing, we wanted to make sure that America hears the firsthand experiences directly from Jewish students studying at Columbia. We are joined today by Eden Yadigar, a junior at Columbia University, and Yola Ashkenazi, a senior at Barnard. We're going to begin with Yola. Good morning. Thank you for having me. After the testimony before this group back in November regarding anti-Semitism on U.S. campuses, I couldn't imagine that almost half a year later we'd be having a similar conversation. But I appreciate the opportunity to share with you and the American people what's happening today on the Columbia University campus. My name is Yola Ashkenazi and I'm a student at Columbia University. You've all seen the wave of hatred for Jews that has swept college campuses in the last six months. For Jewish students like myself, we've lived it. For most students, the college years provide an opportunity to find belonging on campus. Columbia, meanwhile, has recognized clubs that say things like, quote, Zionists not invited, and the Holocaust wasn't that special. There have been swastikas drawn in the International Affairs Building and in Havermeyer Hall. We've been subject to an endless barrage of rhetoric and divisive actions that have left us marginalized and unsafe. Columbia permits hate rallies on our campus that call for violence and the eradication of the Jewish state. Chants of, we don't want no Zionists here, death to the Zionist state, and call for intifada revolution reverberated across our buildings, targeting every Jewish, Israeli, and Zionist student. On February 2nd, one of my friends was physically held against the wall outside of Dodge Fitness Center by hateful demonstrators because he was wearing an item that identified him as Jewish. When reporting the incident, Columbia Public Safety Officer suggested he not wear anything identifying, identifying him as Jewish when tensions are high. And when Columbia professor Joseph Massad publicly praised Hamas attacks as, quote, awesome, just days after their massacre on Israeli civilians, and when he attended the unauthorized rally on April 4th, he sent a chilling message that violence against Jews is permissible on our campus. And Columbia students, as we have seen, have followed suit. I, and all other Jewish students, can share countless more examples of what we've been subjected to on campus. But perhaps more disheartening is the endless gaslighting of Jewish students by Columbia University's administration when seeking help. 
To understand our frustration, you don't need to look any further than President Shafiq's op-ed in the Wall Street Journal yesterday. President Shafiq absurdly claims, quote, most of the people protesting on Columbia's campus do so from a place of genuine political disagreement, not from personal hatred or bias or support for terrorism. While I don't doubt that many of my peers are seeking to express their political opinions peacefully, what I and other pro-Israel students at Columbia have been subjected to is not well-intentioned political debate. It has not been debate at all. When Barnard hosted a day of dialogue, it was boycotted. When people chant Intifada revolution and death to the Zionist state, they're announcing their hatred for Jews, not debating politics. When they cheered for the Houthis, quote, make us proud, turn another ship around, they're obviously demonstrating support for terrorism. When they, when they harangue us with chants of from the river to the sea, Shafiq doesn't want us to believe our own eyes and ears. What our university president calls a, quote, political disagreement, a bipartisan resolu resolution in Congress makes it clear that the slogan from the river to the sea is anti-Semitic and calls for the total eradication of the Jewish democratic state of Israel and the annihilation of the 9 million people who live there. I'd like to personally thank the members of Congress on both sides of the aisle for demonstrating leadership and moral clarity on the topic, and I hope my university can follow suit. Those sentiments don't contribute to acad academic debate, and to be clear, they are not limited to protests and signage in specific areas. We have been harassed with hateful slogans in the dorms, dining halls, and classrooms. All we've asked for is to be left alone, protected on campus, and able to study in peace. After all the attention a few months ago, it's shocking that I still have to deal with a hostile learning environment and an administration that is unwilling or unable to enforce the university's own policies. An anti-Semitism task force was created to placate concerned students, but all it does is collect data. There's absolutely no transparency about what they're doing, if anything, to the people violating the university rules. Four students were suspended for planning an event supporting terrorism, yet they showed up on campus the next day and participated in a demonstration in clear violation of their suspension. I have to ask, where's the accountability? Where's the tangible action to ensure that we, as Jewish students, are safe and welcome on Columbia's campus? It is not enough to issue statements condemning anti-Semitism. We need concrete steps to address the root causes of this hatred and bigotry. Instead of tackling the problem head on, Columbia tries to normalize support for terrorism and anti-Semitism by conflating it with political criticism. President Shafiq writes that, quote, anti-Semitism has been with us for thousands of years. The Jewish students on campus have been under extreme duress since October. Yet it took a summons before Congress for Shafiq to write that she hopes to, quote, begin to find common ground in finding solutions to anti-Semitism. In short, she wants to start the process of starting the process. But for Jewish students, the need is urgent. The time for solutions is now. Thank you. We'll now hear from Eden Yadigar. Thank you, Chairwoman Stefanik and Chairwoman Fox for your steadfast commitment to amplifying the voices and experiences of American Jewish college students in the face of pervasive anti-Semitism plaguing our universities. My name is Eden Yadigar, and I'm an undergraduate student at Columbia University. I am a proud first-generation American, a proud Jew, and the daughter of immigrants who fled Iran in the face of religious persecution. On February 29th, I had the privilege of participating in the roundtable convened by the Committee on Education and the Workforce focused on the scourge of anti-Semitism on campuses across America. Six weeks later, I am disheartened to say that this fact remains. The Jewish community at Columbia is alone. The subject of today's hearing is Columbia in Crisis, Columbia University's response to anti-Semitism. Though a more appropriate title would have been Columbia in Crisis, Columbia University's failed response to anti-Semitism. In the five months following October 7th, the Columbia administration sat idly by as a tsunami of anti-Semitism in the forms of harassment, bullying, exclusion, intimidation, and physical violence flooded every aspect of campus life. A tenured professor insisted that people who are religiously observant and go regularly to synagogue are indoctrinated. A student star of David Necklace was ripped off her neck as she walked to class. On several occasions, Jewish students have been accosted by fellow Columbia students who yelled, fuck the Jews, at them on campus, in the kosher section of the dining hall, and in the law school. 
Many Jewish students are too fearful to report incidents of discrimination and harassment that occur both in and out of the classroom because of how little faith they have that the university will take the necessary steps to protect them. The university's inaction has left Jewish students abandoned. Months of silence from our leadership has conditioned us to believe that the university does not care about us and will not protect us. Those in the Columbia faculty and administration that have allowed the situation to reach this point should be deeply ashamed. They have failed their Jewish students. Presumably in this hearing, President Shafiq will point to a handful of very recent steps taken to address the anti-Semitic campus atmosphere. These steps are necessary, but not sufficient. The fact that we have gotten to the point of student suspensions following an event in which speakers tied to U.S.-designated foreign terrorist organizations praised and promoted Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Islamic Jihad should be cause enough for alarm. I am here to call on our university leadership to continue its recent trajectory and take meaningful, sustained steps to ensure that all students at Columbia are able to learn free from hatred, intimidation, and harassment of any kind. I similarly urge this committee to continue to hold our university administration accountable in implementing the necessary action to effect such change. To be clear, and as we've seen in recent days in cities across the U.S., freedom of speech does not include freedom to harass. Freedom of speech does not include freedom to threaten. Freedom of speech does not include freedom to interfere with the education of Jewish students nor of any students on campus. The situation unfolding on our campus does not just threaten Jewish students. It is a fundamental attack on Columbia's values and on America's values. Anti-Semitism is not an exclusively Jewish issue, nor is it a political one. Anti-Semitism is an American issue, and it must remain a bipartisan one. In thy light shall we see light. Columbia's motto captures the essence of what drew me and so many others to the university. It epitomizes the Columbia that I know can be. Yet the Columbia that I currently attend is unrecognizable from that version. It is time to turn the light back on Columbia and illuminate the way for all of us. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning. These students who have spoken have been incredibly articulate and defining the problems that we are seeing on our campuses and particularly at Columbia. I am so proud of them <clears throat> for the way they have made their statements <clears throat> and argued their case. They've told us, along with other students, that Jewish students, faculty, and staff live and work in fear on Columbia University's campus. While anti-Semitism has been festering on numerous college campuses, Columbia University stands out as one of the worst offenders. Not only have Jewish members of the community experienced the administration's failure to enforce its own policies firsthand, but their lives have also been further endangered as Columbia students, faculty, and staff have supported and glorified terrorism, even hosting an affiliate of the terrorist group PFLP. These students have articulated that again extremely well. Today's hearing will expose the pervasive and extreme anti-Semitism present at Columbia <clears throat> and allow Congress to hold the university leaders accountable for their unacceptable dereliction of their duty to protect students, Jewish students and staff. Columbia University must confront anti-Semitism aggressively and unequivocally. This committee will continue to hold Columbia's leaders accountable until its students are guaranteed the safe learning environment they are entitled to. It, does anyone have any questions you'd like to ask? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair uh, and Congresswoman. Uh, this week, the University of Southern California announced that its valedictorian would no longer be able to give a speech citing security risks following some online chatter about the Israel-Hamas war. I just want to get your reaction to that 
and is this something the committee may look into further? Well, I think it's up to the universities to ensure the safety of their students. That's what we have been doing in these hearings, hearings, saying, what are you doing to ensure the safety of your students? The administrations on these campuses have got to take action to do that. They collectively need to get a spine and say, we're not going to tolerate um, anti-Semitism and we're not going to tolerate violence on our campuses. Yes, ma'am. Chairwoman, do you think anything has changed for the better since your December hearing with the presidents of Harvard, UPenn, and MIT? Um, in terms of Columbia, again, I think there's a lot of talk, but we don't see much action, as the students have pointed out here today. Uh, there's activity going on on the campus this morning uh, that shouldn't be allowed. So it's very hard to measure what has been done so far. Yes, ma'am. Chairman, um, I know you talked about uh, the suspensions for students. Are you in talks about any other whether, uh, repercussions, whether it's criminal charges for these students to get them off campus? I know you're demonstrating in support of a terrorism group. Is there any other repercussions besides suspensions for students? Are you asking, are we going to do anything to hold students accountable? It's not up to this committee to be holding those students accountable. It's up to the university administrators to hold them accountable. Uh, we have to hold the administrators accountable for what they're doing or not doing. Back in the back. Dr. Fox, thanks for being here. Uh, I know that Harvard has not been particularly compliant with uh, the committee's subpoenas <coughs> and documents. Uh, I'm wondering if that's something that you've seen from other administrations. Well, we're not getting good and uh, distinct answers to the questions that we're asking, but we'll keep asking and we'll keep pushing. So uh, we've asked specific questions. You all have the letters that we have sent out and we're going to continue to press the schools for specific information and we will see how that turns out. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it pays to be on the front row. <laughs> um, and is there a timeline for when we might see a report about them or any sort of resolution? What we have said from the very beginning, what not just our hope is, but what should be is that students and faculty must feel safe on their, they must be safe and they must feel safe on their campuses. This is all about the role of the university in terms of focusing on allowing the students to get a good education. And they're not going to be able to do that if they're distracted for fear of their lives or for fear uh, of, of being accosted by someone on their campuses. That we are exercising our oversight responsibilities and we're saying to the campus administrators, you have to hold, keep your students safe. Uh, we'll continue to press the issue as long as we can. Thank you. One more question. Chairman, are you close to bringing in more university presidents for the committee? Um, we haven't made a decision on that. <laughs>